My post-COVID sore throat got worse over the summer, but I really wanted to podcast. So this episode will be coming to you Stephen Hawking style. How can I keep COVID from dominating my life when simply talking brings pain? Hi there. Welcome to episode 8 of Yuns and Yuns, where we talk about things string related, whether that's yuns, as in fibers, or yuns, as in stories. Everything I talk about, yun, patterns, books, I will link below. I've been away a while, so if you're a new viewer, you haven't missed much. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. As you can see, I'm in a new space. We have moved from Colorado Springs to Tulsa. And because of COVID, I will probably have a lot of interruptions because my boys are home, doing online school. I probably won't get through recording this episode in one day, so you will see a wardrobe change. My ENT says my sore throat is laryngopharyngeal reflux disease, but so far, I'm having a hard time believing it. I spent the last two weeks following the prescribed treatment, with the exception of switching to a low-fat diet. It has done nothing. To be fair, it took me several days to get off coffee, I had to wean myself down. I miss coffee. I'm going to interrupt my past self here to clarify that yes, I do have a voice, um, but it's a lot like a cell phone with a bad battery. And the more I talk, the more I lose it at the end of the day. And it's today, it's only noon and I've talked so much, I feel like it's already going. So um, I just wanted to make that point. Anyway, I've got a whole bunch of FOs, whoops, acquisitions, and books to talk about, so I probably will go over this in the course of several days. I might even just make this a fiber episode, and make a separate book episode. However, I might talk about White Fragility by Robin D. Anglia anyway. That's an important book. My first FO is Socks. 64 Stitches. Chiagu's 2.75 mm needles, not that needle size seems to matter for me. I'll get into that later. The yun is patterns crowe, singing the blue stripes, with muslin for the cuffs, heels, and toes. I am going to ask for sock blockers for Christmas. These turned out a little small for me, so they are going to my oldest son, William. But for some reason, he wants me to make him some really oversized socks. Weird, not sure I'll do that. The pattern is Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson. I'm glad for the computer reading this time, because I always want to say Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> Next is my new favorite hat. My slouchy sock head hat. This yarn is from Nicole at Derorb Creations. It's extra soft, and is dyed from avocados and onion skins on a 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon base. I absolutely love how it turned out. I decided that the four-leaf clover progress keeper looked so nice with it, that I should just leave it on. The next FO is a dishcloth. I made a second one before we left Colorado, but of course can't find it now. I ordered the Harry Potter knitting book with some birthday money, and in the chaos of moving, I felt compelled to knit something simple and inexpensive. These are the seven horcruxes.
this one is, of course, Harry. The colorway is supposed to be red, but I think it looks rather orangey pink. The Yon brand is peaches and cream. I used boy size 7 4.5 mm aluminum needles. The missing dishcloth is Nagini, done in green. I'll probably just make another. I'm working on the diadem, which I'll show you in the whoops. <coughs> it didn't matter how many different ways I tried to spell Nagini, I can't get her to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> I learned with these, that cotton is difficult to knit on bamboo needles. So I went out and got some aluminum ones and it was easier on the muscles in my hands. Timmins has top priority to my hand muscles. My next FO was not planned at all. And there is a story behind it. My youngest son w- what? What'd I do? Ahem. As I was saying. What'd I do? My next FO was not planned at all. And there is a story behind it. My youngest son wanted to try out loom knitting, because he saw his friend Luke doing it. So we got one along with a Karen latte cake. But guess who ended up making it? Yepers. Before I show you the FO, here's the label. The colorway is velvet teal. It was a nice soft fluffy scarf with fuzzy threads poking from it. It says bulky, but I don't think it was bulky enough for the loom. What I'm about to show you is not what it looked like when I finished it. So. We did not have a washer and dryer when we first moved in. I knew this, so I made sure I had a full basket of clean clothes to wear until our new machines were delivered. The night we moved in, we decided to go to dinner. It had been rainy all day. We didn't empty out the SUV yet and hubby had put my laundry basket right against the rear door. The boys couldn't find their masks, and when hubby opened the rear door to look for them, guess what happened to all my clean clothes? Boom. Right in the mud. <laughs> Including the scarf I made with the loom. The label says machine washable and dryable. And because I had other delicate clothes that I just wanted clean, I ran everything on the gentle cycle with low heat to dry. <laughs> this is what the scarf looks like now. I'm not sure I like it. It's definitely less fluffy. So I probably won't be buying any more of the latte cakes. Now to whips. This is what I have of the diadem dishcloth. I got tired of cotton by this one and just set it aside to make that weird scarf. But I will be making the goblet cloth soon because Charlie's friend really liked it. His little sister really wants the Hedwig stuffy. I've never knitted a stuffy before, so that might prove a challenge. But it'll be a fun gift to send out to our friends. My next whip also has a long story. I guess it's sort of a hoe. I've always wanted convertible mittens, so with some birthday money, I bought a pattern from Stacy at Very Pink Knits. It's called Knock Knock Convertible Mitts. This is the first one. I made the top, and haven't yet attached it. I'm glad I didn't. My second mitt, as you can see, came out really small. The stitching is much tighter even though I used the same 2.25mm needle. I made this mitten before we put our house on the market. I made this one while we were in the process of selling and moving. Do you think maybe I was stressed much? We had quite a few problems due to serious negligence from certain realtors. None that represented us. We had picked our dream house and had planned to move mid-August. But the inspection had to be delayed because our buyers in Colorado backed out five days before we figured it out. Their realtor had gone on vacation, and apparently couldn't be bothered to send a simple text saying that they couldn't get the loan. When we finally got the inspection for the dream house, we found that the foundation was crumbling. It was going to need over $100,000 worth of work right away. By the time we found out, we already had our buyer going on the Colorado house. Long story short, we were displaced for a month, living on my sister-in-law's farm. I'm super grateful to my lovely sister-in-law, but do you know how hard it is to register kids for online school in a different state? During a pandemic? I'm actually surprised my small mitt wasn't smaller. And certainly all the stress did not help my sore throat.
so I'm making another one, though I am trying to make it like the smaller one. I didn't like the bind off of the first one. It's not stretchy enough, and I plan to wear these while I play harp. I think I'll have enough yarn left for the tops too. If not, they'll just be fingerless gloves. I really love the colorway because of all the blue and purple. It's from Lion Brand's Manny Pedi line. After I picked it out I loved the irony of the colorway name, Boot. <coughs> My next whip also started as a birthday present. My mum sent me a Joanne's gift card and there was just enough to get a sweater vest quantity. I'm making the Riviette sweater by Rachel Brockman and chose to go with a bamboo fiber. This is also a Lion Brand yarn called True Boo. The colorway is Mushroom. This is what I have so far. The yarn is a bit fiddly to work with, but the material it makes has a really nice drape to it. The front and back are identical. So once I finish this panel, I just make another one and stitch them together. This is the first time I've been able to do a bit of lace work with yarn overs and have it come out okay. However, I'll have to tink back a bit here. I'm missing a stitch from the previous row. It's my first real mistake on this piece. I'm chalking it up to distraction from having to help the boys with so much schoolwork. My last whip will be a whip for a while. I started a scrappy sock yarn blanket. I really love the one Lisa is making on her podcast, Knit All the Yarn. So I started one too. The pattern is called The Coziest Memory by Kemper Ray. And this is all I have so far. I won't be showing my progress as often as she does hers. Now that it's getting cooler, she's working on it again and will add 10 or 20 squares a month. But she makes a crazy amount of socks and has enough leftover yarn to do that. I'm not as awesome as her yet. On to acquisitions. I ordered this yarn, months, ago. It arrived the day after my last episode posted. I have been sitting on it all this time just so I can show you the hank before I work with it. And I'm very very ready to finally work with it. I want to support people of color as much as I can. This is from a black owned die in Maryland. Her name is Kerida and her shop is called Neighborhood Fiber Company. This yarn is her rustic fingering base which is 100% merino. The color is called Logan Circle. I just love the beautiful greens and browns. My plans for this yarn is to make the Ashton Shawlette by D. O'Keefe. It's supposed to be a good pattern for lace work beginners. I really want to get better at lace. We shall see how it goes. I wanted to get some of Kerida's colorway inspired by Michelle Obama, but it looks like she'll run out by the time I get extra money. <laughs> My last acquisition I don't really like to count. I'm not a fan of most Red Heart yarn, but I really want to figure out this pooling crochet technique. Red Heart has specially designed yarns for pooling. But it's a rather boring acrylic fiber. I'm not a fan of the colorways that were available either, but it was cheap, and will serve the purpose of helping me to learn pooling. I hope. If you're interested, this colorway is called Ho Pooling. Now would be the time for me to move to books. Yes, I think, just one book. Then I'll talk about the others in a supplemental episode. I read a lot of books. This method of having the computer read my script for me takes, a, long, time, to, do. But at least my throat isn't killing me, as it does when I talk for too long. I wish a certain Oompa Loompa had this problem. White Fragility by Robin D. Anglia is a wonderful book for any white person who needs to understand more deeply, why, and, how, to be a better ally to people of color. I did not know, what I did not know. This book lays it all out. The best part, it was written by a white woman who is a sociologist and, has a PhD in multicultural education. She specializes in diversity training for businesses. Her training makes her an expert, and her whiteness gives her perspective.
she really digs deep into the psychology of what white people are fed in our culture and how it contributes, even unconsciously, to a white supremacist society. I'm talking about things I never noticed. I need a lot more black friends in my circle. I need to be called out whenever I say anything that can be construed as racist or coming from a position of privilege, and I need friends who will know that I won't be fragile about being called out. Seriously, call me out. If you are a person of color and find something I say to be racist, then it's racist. Tell me, I will believe you, and make a strong effort to correct my behavior. We all need to be more anti-racist. I wish my voice had the stamina to do this podcast normally, because something like this is so important and a computer voice just doesn't cut it. But maybe the fact that I've had to use a computer voice at all because this virus is, not, just the flu will make the point too. Anyway, I will end it here. I hope you are well. I hope you get to make all the year and year things, and read all the books. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.